This is a split flap scoreboard. But before we get into the details of how this works, and before we take a look at the unnecessarily deep dive I went down trying to find the perfect no light display, we need to understand why I needed a no light display in the first place. And it all starts with this janky proof of concept for a video free video game. Basically, when you hit this button, this thing jumps. There is a solenoid in here, which is basically just a magnet and a plunger. And when I connect that through this ball bearing counterweight, it allows the whole assembly to jump. So now I've added a bunch of obstacles onto this thing and there's a stepper motor in the back. And when we turn the motor on, now we have ourselves a very basic side scrolling video game. Which is actually very fun and sort of challenging. Let's go super speed. Yes. Boom. Yes. Clean. Clean. Huge. Oh, that's it. Game over. This is actually more fun than I was expecting, which is really exciting. Although you might have noticed it's missing something fundamental. It needs score. But since this is an anti-video game, it needs a scorekeeping method that doesn't use video. And that's where the unnecessarily deep dive begins. But really quick, before we head down that crazy side quest adventure, I need to talk to you about this video sponsor, Straight Arrow News. As an engineer, I like to get my information as straight facts, and that includes my news. Straight Arrow News is a website and an app that is committed to providing unbiased news. I have found it very exhausting lately to try to find unbiased news sources on the internet. It's hard to know what information is factual and what information is just trying to push some sort of agenda on you. I've been using Straight Arrow News because it is certified by a couple of different news rating organizations to be center biased or balanced. And that way I don't have to think about where this news is coming from. On top of that, many of their articles have this on it so you can see exactly how the different sides of the political spectrum are reporting on this specific story so you could do a lot deeper of a dive if you really want to. If you're interested in this unbiased news source, go to san.com slash jbv to check out the app. The easiest way to implement a light-free scoreboard is to use this e-paper display. Aside from the mechanical simplicity, one of the benefits of this display is that I can show more than just score. I can also show graphics or troll players with messages. But since this is YouTube, I'm not trying to find the easiest way to do things. And as a mechanical engineer, I find the lack of moving parts in this display boring. Originally, I was thinking that I would just use a modified version of my mechanical counter model. You can see that as the first digit turns past nine back to zero, the second digit automatically increases by one. This is because of the Geneva style gear right here. So I could just throw a motor onto the end of this and have it run automatically. But this presents a big problem and that comes in high score tracking and resetting. The only way to set a number or reset it back to zero is to either cycle through all the numbers or wind it all the way back. One thing I could do is connect a motor to each of the reels and drive them all individually. This is kind of the way old pinball machines used to keep score, but they actually use a solenoid to click the wheel forward one at a time, sort of like this. So this got me thinking, if I'm going full out powering each one of these individually, I know I could find a really cool way to do this. Let the side quest begin. The first side quest was reverse engineering this mechanical seven segment display by Flower 3D. Each segment corresponds to a cam, and as the cam spins, you can see that it pushes the segment, sliding it out of view. An elastic band connected to the segment pulls it back in when the cam lobe moves out of the way. Each segment has its own cam that is specifically designed to push the segments in and out depending on which number is being shown. Another way this could be done is by flipping the segments out of the way instead of sliding them. I came across this video by the Karakuri channel, which shows a display made up of these flaps that are flipped using a rack and pinion. Each segment has a pinion on it, and as the follower moves forward and back, you can see how it rotates the rack up and down. This was the same mechanism used in old Greyhound Racing Stadium displays. I decided to try to adapt this design to a fully 3D printable version of it. In this design, the segments are connected to a pair of inverse cams. One pushes the follower forward, which flips the segment up, and the other one pushes the follower back, flipping the segment down. This gets rid of the need for an elastic band. Stacking seven of these and connecting them to the seven segments, when the camshaft is at one of 10 different positions, the display shows the numbers zero through nine. Since this side quest was running at full inertia, I decided to add a servo motor to the back of the display so I could control which number is showing by rotating the servo. 
I then added three more modules in this base, and now I have this epic seven segment display clock. Just as a side note, I could have used a stepper motor instead of a servo. This would have allowed the modules to go from nine back to zero without having to flip through all the numbers on the way. But a servo motor requires much simpler electronics to operate than a stepper motor. And my aim was to make this project as accessible as possible. If you wanna print this yourself, the files are available on my website. Link is in the description below. And that concludes the rack driven mechanical display side quest, right? Wrong. If you're ever wondering why it takes me so long to finish a project, it's because of things like this. I decided that this would be the perfect time to learn how to design a custom PCB. I ended up settling on a free piece of software called KiCad to do the design. And I found this tutorial that got me started making the whole process a lot easier than I was expecting it to be. One thing I learned along the way, routing traces is incredibly zen. Once I had a PCB design that I was happy with, I used PCB way to get the board manufactured. This whole process was also a lot easier than I was expecting. Literally just uploaded the files to their website, hit order, and I had them here in under a week. After a bit of struggle trying to solder tiny pieces to the board, I plugged in an Arduino Nano, an RTC module, all the servos and a power supply, and boom, I have a clock working off of my own custom PCB. That is so sick. All right, now that the side quest on a side quest is officially complete, we can keep moving forward. Now don't get me wrong, these seven segment displays are really freaking cool, but they're limited to just numbers. And remember, I wanna be able to troll players when they lose at the game. I briefly explored using a 14 segment display, which is basically a seven segment display on steroids. As you can see, the 14 segments allows me to show both letters and numbers and even an emoji or two. But the prototype that I built uses 14 motors and it's obviously pretty big. So it's not a very practical display, especially for this application. And while we're on the subject of impractical displays, I went down another side quest where I took 16 of my engine Ardenaut models, printed them half black and half white and hooked them up to 16 more motors. And I realized after the fact that I actually needed five rows instead of four, so I could only get some of the characters out, but at least I was able to make this cool animation. All right, we're done with side quests, which is a good thing because this entire time from the very beginning, I'd been planning to make the scoreboard out of these split flat modules. So let's go do that. A split flap display is basically just a rotating drum that contains a bunch of flaps carrying numbers and letters that have been split in half. When paired with a precisely controlled stepper motor, the drum can be rotated to show any character that is contained within it. There's a really well documented DIY version of a split flap by Dave Madison, and I could have literally just used all of his work, but I stubbornly decided that I needed to try to design my own split flap. And after many different iterations, too many, I ended up with this. The main challenges that I had were trying to figure out how I was going to make the flaps themselves. My original plan was to use my laser cutter to engrave this three ply acrylic, but this was the thinnest three ply material that I could find. This is a problem because as the flaps stack up against the front of the display, they push against each other. And if I want them to sit flat instead of angled, it puts a lot of force on the flaps. And as you can see, as it turns, it's not ideal. The only way to solve this is to make the drum bigger so that the holes are a little bit further apart, but then the drum would be massive. I decided instead to go with multicolor 3D printing to make the flaps, making them a lot thinner, allowing the drum to remain at a reasonable size, just barely fitting the motor and sensor inside. And that led to this iteration, which was successful. However, after seeing videos of the split flap from the Frankfurt airport, I've decided that this doesn't even come close to fast enough. The main limitation are these cheap stepper motors. When you ask them to go faster, they go, nah. So instead, I'm gonna use these Pancake NEMA 17 motors, which are a lot more expensive, but also so much faster. Look at these two motors side by side. These motors won't fit into the drum the same way that the smaller motors do, so I'm gonna move them behind the drum and connect them using this polyurethane drive belt. While I'm at it, for the game, I'm not gonna need the full 40 characters in the split flap, so I can shrink the drum way down to 16 characters, which is enough for the numbers and up to six trolling messages. I guess we could do five trolling messages and one encouraging message. Not sure yet. Anyways, when I compare the old design with the new design, there's absolutely no contest. Now that I have a design that I'm happy with, we just need to make eight of them. Let's go.
almost done, but I think it needs one final touch. Okay, moment of truth. Let's see if this thing even turns on. One, two, three. I can't get too excited yet. We gotta see if it even works. Turns out it does work, thankfully. I couldn't be happier with how satisfying the split flop sounds as it increments numbers. I ended up programming in four trolling messages and two nice messages. But listen to how good this sounds when it's just counting up. So I've added a couple things to the game. I've added this switch right here, so it knows when it's hitting an object, and it knows when it's game over. I've also connected the main controller to the motor controller, so basically every 10 points, the motor speeds up a bit and the game gets harder as you go. Finally, the way that I've decided to score it is every time you hit the button and it jumps, you get a point. I'm not sure how this is gonna work out, but what I'm thinking is like, if you go off the ramp and you get a lot of air, you can just like jam the button and increase your points. Oh, this is so sick. Okay, so let's turn this thing on officially and play our first official game. All right, so you hit the button to start and we're off. Let's go. Not a bad start. I mean, it was a really bad start, actually. High score is 11 now. Let's see if we can beat that. High score is 13 now. Let's go. Focus, focus. Pressure. <laughs> and now I'm getting trolled by my own game. I'm getting trolled by my past self right now. Thirty-three! Yes! Alright, I think we can do better. One hour later. Come on, get over it, get over it, get over it! Here we go. Oh yeah! 81! Let's go! Uh, I, can't, I really don't want to be annoying, but I just can't help it. I get so excited. So this has proven that adding a scoreboard to this mechanized cardboard proof of concept has turned this into an actual legitimate anti-video game. I mean, in its current form, it's already a ton of fun. I literally just spent the last hour trying to set a high score. 81, not bad. I think we can do better. But in the next video, I already have plans for how I'm gonna make this thing so much better, including variable obstacles, variable levels. So hit the subscribe button if you wanna see where this is going, and I'll see you in the next video. Engine easy.